Hi guys, welcome back to another cooking video this time. Um, this is like a Thanksgiving edition. This is a side dish, one of the main side dishes, and a easy, simple dessert. First off, we have our peach dump cake. I have my peaches in heavy syrup. Super, oh, don't matter, just cake mix. Um, and cinnamon and butter. Those, that is all for the peach dump cake. Those four items. Cinnamon, peaches and heavy syrup, cake mix, and butter. Over here, it's a different store. We have our mac and cheese homemade. Um, you're going to need whatever cheese you like. I have Monterey Jack, mozzarella, big bag of sharp cheddar. I have one pound of large elbow noodles. I'm going to make sure that's enough. If not, I have more in the cabinet. I have my Lowry's seasoning salt, seasoned salt. I think we call it seasoning salt. Anyways, it's seasoned salt, um, black pepper, butter, milk. I'm also going to use some flour to make my roux. And I have my eggs for my um, mac and cheese. Over here, I have my um, strainer, my mixing bowl so I can mix up my mac and cheese. Two pans, because I'm making two pans of macaroni and cheese. One for home, one for work. And this deeper one is for my peach dump cake. So I've already started my water. I'm just going to grate this Monterey Jack cheese. And I'll come back to show you guys how to throw together the peach dump cake. Jack, I'm gonna just use half for now and see where I get from there. Okay, I have my Monterey Jack cheese. This is about a cup, but it's half of an eight ounce. So this is four ounces of cheese. And my water's still coming to boil from my mac and cheese. So let's get started on the peach cake, peach dump cake. Um, I have a little cooking spray left. You wanna spray the bottom of your pan. I'm using um, coconut oil spray. You can use any spray. Vegetable, olive, whatever you have. Done with that. Like, this is like a five minute prep or even less dish. Dessert. So, I got my peaches and heavy syrup. I already rinsed and cut open. I want to simply just make sure y'all see this. Simply just pour this into the bottom of your pan. I, I bought another can because I want to make sure it's enough. It's like right now it's not really covering the whole bottom. So I'm gonna just open my other can. Okay I have my second can open. Peaches. I don't know if I'm going to use the whole thing, but let's see. Again, this is just the test. What is this? Oh, the syrup is everywhere. Okay. Let's put some over here. Make sure it's even. Probably use like half a can, but one and a half cans. Or if you find a bigger can than my can, which is failing, I'm failing, I'm failing. 
my can is 29 ounces so if you find one a little bit bigger that'll be perfect perfect because look i only have a couple peaches left in the can and i got peaches on my counter let me clean that up <laughs> right back okay while i was over there making a mess with the peaches my water has come to a boil so now i'm just gonna stir in my add in my macaroni i got the large elbow noodles you don't have to get large because i know some people don't like big noodles but personally i prefer these so, hopefully this is enough and we'll see So now I have my noodles in there, and we're going to let those cook according to the box, so, or the package. Just check yours out. And now I have my peaches in here. Let's just finish this cake <laughs> quickly, okay? Now, you need your cake mix. But, you don't need to add any of these ingredients that it says on the back of the package. You're just going to simply get a knife, open it up, <clears throat> and sprinkle the dry cake mix over the top of those peaches. Make sure it's covering everywhere. This is going to give us our crust. And if you don't have time to make peach cobbler, this is like a good alternative. It's tasty. Okay. I didn't use the whole cake mix. If I was to make another one, I could, but I don't have any more peaches and I'm not going back to the store. So that is that. Now, got some on the edge. Now, the only thing you need, let's see, you see how that is all covered? The juice from those peaches and the butter I'm going to put on top is going to cook this cake mess into a crust. Now you just sprinkle cinnamon all over the top. I guess I didn't need this other cinnamon. Now I'm going to going to slice up this butter on top. You can melt the butter and just pour it all over the top. That's usually what I do. Should I? No, no. This time I'm going to put little slices everywhere. looks about good show you guys so that's my cinnamon with my butter layered on top be sure to pre preheat your oven to 350 degrees and the peach dump cake is going to take about 45 minutes to make 
So now you're done. That's it. You'll know when it's done. The cake mix should not be white anymore. It will be a brown crust due to the butter and the peaches on the bottom. And you have a delicious sweet cake. And an easy dessert. So, over here, our peach, our peaches, <laughs> I'm stuck on peaches. Our noodles are cooking fairly fast. Ooh, ooh. Just stir those up so they're not sticking together. And we'll be right back when the noodles are finished. And the oven is preheated for me to put the cake in the oven. Okay, my oven is completely heated. Mine lets me know by a beep. And now I'm going to just slowly put this in the oven. Don't want to mess it up. Support the bottom of the pan. You know what? It's fine. And there's your dump cake. Sorry. In the oven. Set my timer for 45 minutes. But I'm going to check on it at 45 and see if it's complete. Like I said, that all that white powder has to be completely gone. And it has to have like a brown crust on top. So we'll see in 45 minutes. And let me just strain our noodles. Our mac and cheese. Because it's all that cooks pretty fast. Just... I know some people rinse their noodles. But, um... <clears throat> I wasn't taught that way. Here we are with our bowl of mac. First things first, I'm going to season it because once I add those cheeses and I mean like egg and stuff, I'm not going to taste it. Oh, wrong seasoning. I use black pepper, but um, if you want, you can use white pepper. I mean, open a big part. Damn. Just a little bit more because that's too much. Stir this up because I want this to go. Pop out a little bit more. It's good there. Oh, I need too much black pepper. I'm going to make myself sneeze. Okay. As you can see, it's still piping hot. Um, Going with my Laurie's seasoned salt. Just a little, and then I'm gonna taste it. And then you gotta make sure. Lean it over so y'all can see what I'm doing. Don't give us a taste. Clean fork. Corresponding okay. whatever. Make sure it's seasoned well. Don't forget your salt. I mean your salt. Your cheeses have sodium in them, don't they? Yeah, sodium. A lot of pepper. Let's put a little more salt. Just a little sprinkle, sprinkle. Mix that up. That tastes about right to me. Still far too much pepper. But um the Monterey Jack and the sharp cheddar I'm gonna put in my roux. But the mozzarella, since the mozzarella gives it that pull and that stringiness, I'm gonna put that directly into the bowl here while the noodles are still hot. Half a 
I feel bad for now. The cheese sauce is the key and the seasoning is the key. You don't want nobody to say your mac and cheese wasn't good. It's called mac and cheese because it's full of cheese. Don't be skimpy with the cheese. It can't be cheap if you want to make mac and cheese. Um, as you can see, like I said, the mozzarella gives it that stringiness, so that's why I added it while it was still hot. We're going to go over to the stove and make our cheese sauce, which is going to thin this out, give it that nice creaminess. So I think we're good with the mozz right now. <clears throat> Let's start our cheese sauce. And if you're like me and you don't use flour a lot in your house, make sure you check and see if you have enough flour. Because I made the mistake of thinking I had some regular white flour, all-purpose flour, but I don't. So, I know I do, but a little bit. Let's get over here to the stove. I'm going to need that milk over here, too. And start our roux. Same pan I cooked the noodles in. Didn't even wash it. Didn't need to. Just gonna melt a whole stick of butter. So I'm making a big serving. I'm gonna let that stick of butter melt down. Like making gravy. If you know how to make gravy, then you can make this roux. Instead of just having water or you're going to have milk. Okay, so our butter is just about completely melted. Now it's time to add the flour. I don't know. I don't have a precise measurement of how much flour this is. I don't even know if it's enough. If not, I have a little backup. time to perfect this you can make an error I mean like yeah you can make an error and be okay still be okay gravy has to be perfect <laughs> oh that's it that's all I got it's awful bring my milk over. So this is my roux. Unlike gravy, you don't have to let it get that dark, but as you can see, it has a nice golden color due to the butter. I'm going to let this cook a little bit to let the let the flour flavor cook out of it. And then we're going to add our milk. I have two cups right there, but we'll see how much we use. Just constantly stir because you don't want it to burn or stick. The middle is bubbling up pretty nice. I think that was a perfect amount of flour. Okay, I let that roux 
that butter and flour mixture cook down for about a couple extra minutes and now I'm going to just slowly add in the milk. I don't know why I keep starting while I'm talking. The milk. So, slowly start adding this in. Little by little, as you're gonna see, it's gonna start sticking them back up. Make sure you get all of that off the edges. See, it's sticking it up right before my eyes. Depending on your liking, you can add more or less milk. If you want it more creamy, you can add more milk. If you want it a little more thick, less milk. I'm going to do mine in between. I want a little cheesiness and I want it still stuck together. So, add a little more milk for now. I'm going to start adding my cheese and if I feel like it's getting too thick, I'm going to add more milk. I've already used one cup of milk. One cup of milk, one stick of butter, and about four to five tablespoons of flour. Not really sure those measurements. So, start adding. This is my Monterey Jack. About four ounces of Monterey Jack. Let's see if I need more. And you want to constantly stir this. I'm sorry for the noise, but. You don't want your cheese sauce to get burnt or stick to the bottom. Get my sharp cheddar open. This melt, I'm gonna show you guys where I'm at now. So I'll let this melt. See if I need more milk, more cheese. Back to show y'all. As you can see, the cheese has melted now. The sharp cheddar, the Monterey Jack. I'm gonna add a little more cheddar. Another good handful. Stir that in. See, that's a little thick, a little creamy. So you want this cheese milk. The sharp cheddar here is gonna be our topping. Um too, so we're not gonna use all of that. In the middle, we need a lot for the top. Keep on. Okay, you guys see me add that um 
last handful of sharp cheddar. I think I'm going to add like, we were at one cup of milk. I'm going to use probably another little splash. Just to thin it out a bit. Oh, I used half a cup. So we're at one and a half cups of milk. One stick of butter still. Same flour amount. Four ounces of Monterey. Two big handfuls of sharp cheddar. Or if you had the little bag, you would have used the whole eight ounces of sharp cheddar at this point. And like I said, constantly stir to make sure it's not sticking. But this sauce is about done. You see now it's more creamy. But once it cooks, I know it's still going to have that thickness. So this is a perfect sauce. And the cheese is melted. Show you guys up close. It looks brown on camera. It's like an orangish, yellowish, brownish. I don't know. It'll be orange inside the mac. So let's get back over there and put it together. Okay. Okay, we're back to our mixing bowl. And yeah, of course, our noodles got stuck together with that mods and just because they love sticking together. Now we're going to separate them. With our cheese sauce, and just pull it all in there. Yeah, just pour it all. Okay. Put that to the side. Slowly mix it together. Just gonna start separating those noodles. Just the way you like. That's what you want it to do. Separate those noodles again. Mm -hmm. Cheese is good. You don't hear that noise? You don't have enough cheese. Okay? Not enough sauce. There's many ways to make mac and cheese. This is just the way I learned or I've come to learn because the way I was taught was like cream cheese. That got on my nerves because you have to let it get soft. And if you don't, don't come out well. Cream cheese with this Campbell's cheddar cheese sauce. But I, when I, once I learned to make my own roux, I was like, oh no, this is the way we're going to do it. So this is my mac and cheese. Slowly stir that in and everything's back. Still thick. I'll leave none of that sauce. <laughs> Alright. Stop doing those. If you want to taste it again, you can. Just to see how the cheese and the seasoning and everything is going together. You can try that. That's some good mac and cheese. Good, good, good. See that some people you can leave it right here and say it's complete but that means you don't bake it or anything but we're gonna put a little extra on there still don't look that yellow on camera but. okay so it's a little thicker than I kind of desired so I'm gonna add a little milk I don't know if it's okay to add milk this late in the stage just a little Yeah, I'm going to add a little more loose. We don't want it too stuck together. Once you bake it, you know, it's already going to naturally stick and everything. So you want it a little more loose um, before you put it in the oven. Also, I don't need to add no more milk. 
we're gonna add our eggs and that's gonna loosen it up too so remember the two eggs from earlier <laughs> notice we didn't use any for um the cake this is for the mac and cheese so you're gonna whisk that up Dirty and all the forks and stuff in the house. Whisk that up. Oh, look at that lightly. We gotta go over the top. That's it. Then spread that in there. Now, this is why you taste everything before because after you put this raw egg in here, there's no more taste testing. It's done. You're gonna put it in the pan and you're done. So. Do all your taste testing before you do this. This is also going to help it stick, stick together. Stir that egg in. Nicely. And that also gives, loosens it up too. Get everything off those edges of this mixing bowl. And you don't want to add the egg in too early. You don't want to add the egg in when the noodles are still hot. That's why I went over, made my roux, came back, added my roux, which was not piping hot, and then added the egg. So you don't want, because you don't want to cook the egg before you put it in the oven. So that egg is all incorporated. Now, let me show you guys. This is what our mac and cheeses look like. Looking like a real cheesy goodness. So, I have my two buttered dishes here. One for work and one for home, like I said earlier. I'm going to try my best without making a mess. Got that one. Oh, put it in the pan. Spread it out evenly. I'm going to have to make another one. I feel I did make a mess already. I'll leave the more skimpy one here at the house. So if you have a um if you make it for a larger family, then um you probably want to use two pounds, double the cheese, double everything else up to make sure that you have enough. Don't let none of that spin this go to waste. Take it off. So, yeah. That's all evenly spreaded. Yada, yada. I gotta remember which one's which. They both look a little campy to me. Alright. Along. Now I'm just going to add my um, dark cheddar to the top for that nice orange color, yellow orange cheddar um, Make sure it's everywhere. Just like the dump cake, you're going to slice butter or melt butter and pour it over the top so that you can get that nice golden bubble cheese. And that is that, you guys. For the dump.
Okay guys, so our mac and cheese is done. It's actually cooled off by now. We're waiting for the dump cake. Mac and cheese got that brown little crust from the butter on top. That's done. Cover that back up. And I have my peach dump cake. I know I said it wouldn't be no white but this is a little more juicy than I thought I could have used more cake mix so to suck up some of that juice but um yeah this is a peach dump cake 